up, you guys? It's your boy, Simply Food by T.Y., and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be making some of the best potatoes au gratin that are on the market. But the first thing I want to talk about is actually the difference between potatoes au gratin and scallop potatoes, because there really is a big difference, and oftentimes, people kind of mix the two up. So the biggest difference between the two is one is kind of heavily based in a cheese sauce or just cheese and the other one is not. Scalloped potatoes really is just sliced potatoes in a very basic cream sauce. That's really all that that is. There's not much else to it. It's kind of straight to the point. Potatoes au gratin, however, is very different. It's a little bit more complex. It has cheese in it, different types of cheeses. And then also, you know, the top layer, once that gets, you know, nice and crusty, and, you know, gets that beautiful browning color. You know, that's where the whole term, you know, gratin comes from. It's from cheese. It's it's a French word. Um, so I just wanted to kind of, you know, specify that. But as you can see, I have gone in by hand and I've sliced all of these potatoes. I use roughly about three and a half to four pounds of russet potatoes. And I did it all by hand. I do not like using mandolins because if you're not careful, you will take off your damn finger. But as you can see, I got them nice and thin. They're all, you know, pretty much unisized. They're all about the exact same size, which is exactly what you want so that they'll cook nice and evenly. So right now we're starting to get them nice and clean. You wanna transfer them over to the sink. Make sure you're rinsing them off in extremely cold water that'll also help keeping the crisp. Once you get those nice and washed, keep it in cold water, sit it to the side. Let's focus on the cheese. So for my particular recipe, I like to use an extra sharp white cheddar. I like to use a pepper jack. And I also like to use, uh, you know, just a regular mild or an extra sharp cheddar. Doesn't really matter what brand you use per se, as long as it's a high quality cheese. Now, y'all know oftentimes I am not one of those people that's against using already pre-shredded cheese. But in this particular type of recipe where there aren't that many ingredients and the cheese really kind of is the star... I prefer to just go ahead and shred it myself. So I'm going to shred all three blocks of those. And then I went ahead and actually used a, another half a block of cheddar so that I could have some extra so I could top it. But now that we have all of our cheese nicely shredded, we can sit that to the side as well. Now let's talk about onions. Now I'm only going to use half of a sweet Vidalia onion. And as you can see, I'm cutting it the long way. Okay, so I'm going... Uh, I guess this would be considered against the grain of the onion um, because you want them to be nice and thin. You do not want no big chunks of onions. So you don't want them diced up. You don't want big hunks of onions. You want them very, very thin. And I'm only going to use a half for this entire recipe. Once you get that prepped, you can set that to the side. As you can see, you guys, we're rolling because this does not take a lot of work. So we've just added in one stick of butter. We're gonna start working on our roux right now. So once your butter starts to melt, you can go ahead and add in your onions. And we're gonna kinda start to break down those onions just so that we can start to get them, you know, nice and soft. Then we can go in with equal parts, which is a half a cup of flour as well. But before we add in that flour, I want us to add in a little boost of flavor, which is a little over a teaspoon worth of that Better Than Bouillon chicken base seasoning. I'm telling you, it's going to add so much flavor to these potatoes. It's going to be out of this world. So now that we've gotten that in and that's kind of broken down and that's seasoned up those butter and the onions, we can now go ahead and throw in our half a cup of flour. Anytime you're making a roux, it's always going to be equal parts. If you use two tablespoons of butter, you're going to use two tablespoons of flour. In this particular recipe, we used a half a cup of butter, so we used a half a cup of flour. It's extremely important at this stage, though, that you really make sure that you cook out all of that flour taste, or you're going to have a very raw flour taste. So I do this for roughly about two to three minutes, I would say. On a very low temperature, you don't want it up too high. You do not want it to burn. And you also don't want it to get too dark. Once that flour taste is cooked out, we're going to start off with adding in two cold, keyword, cold cups of milk. And you've got to make sure that that milk is cold because if not, you're going to end up with lumps, okay? And only start off with two cups first. Once you really start to break it down and you realize that you've gotten all of your clumps out, then that's when it's okay for you to go ahead and add in your third and final cup of milk. Um, 
Once again, I have my temperature on low. This is gonna be a low and slow cheese sauce. You don't want it to burn. You don't want it to get too overly thick. But now that we've gotten all those clumps done, we can go ahead and add in that third cup. Once your milk kind of starts to slowly come up to a simmer, at no point in this recipe should this sauce come up to a boil, at no point, okay? Once it starts to come up to a simmer, we can start to add in our cheeses. I've just added in an eight ounce block of cream cheese. And now we're gonna add in all of those cheeses that we've melted, our pepper jack, our white sharp cheddar, and our yellow cheddar. Now we can go ahead and start to allow that to break down. And as you guys know, you know, when you're um, shredding your own cheese, the cheese is going to break down a lot better because there aren't all those extra additives that's kind of holding the cheese together. So it's gonna melt a lot faster, which is also the reason why there's no real need to have your temperature up too high. Because I'm telling you, if you burn your cheese sauce, that flavor is gonna be through and through it and you're gonna have to start all over. Let's add in just a few seasonings. So we're adding in roughly, I would say about a teaspoon and a half of both onion powder and garlic powder. The same thing with black pepper. And we measured out exactly one tablespoon of seasonal salt. Don't do any more than that or it's gonna be way too salty. We're also gonna be adding in some parsley as well. And at this stage, now this is optional, but it's something that I choose to do. I like to add in one to two teaspoons of sugar. Now that is not gonna make these potatoes sweet whatsoever. All that's simply gonna do is gonna cut some of the natural salt that's coming from all of those cheeses. So don't, don't think that this is gonna make your dish sweet because I promise you it's not. Now we're gonna go ahead and just allow this to do its thing. Keep mixing it, keeping an eye on it, making sure that you know none of that cheese is just rusting on the bottom, allowing your cheese sauce to get nice and smooth. Your cheese sauce should not, should not get um, overly thick at all. It should stay nice and thin for the most part, especially if you stuck with the measurements that I've given you thus far. Once your cheese sauce is finally, you know, melted through and through, we can go ahead and start adding in our potatoes. Now, for me, I do not like to pre-boil my potatoes. I think that is completely unnecessary. And then that's also how you end up with mashed potatoes. I do not like that. I actually prefer to have a little bit of bite to mine when I take mine out of the oven. So do not pre-boil your potatoes. Also, the whole process of layering your potatoes, I don't really think that's personally necessary in this particular type of recipe. If you're making scalloped potatoes, I would say yes. For this, not so much. But you do want to make sure that you're not being too rough when you go to mix this in because you don't want to break up your potatoes. So just make sure you're gently folding in your potatoes into that delicious cheese sauce. And as you can see, that cheese sauce is mixing through that through and through with no issues. It's still nice and thin, but it is, you know, a little bit on the thicker side, just like you want it. You don't want it to be hard as a brick so that when we go over to our baking dish, it'll just pour right in with complete ease. At this point, you guys wanna have your oven preheated at 325 degrees because we are almost done. We're gonna go ahead and pour in, my God. I mean, look at it, Jesus. We're gonna go ahead and pour in all of our potatoes. We're gonna top the rest of these potatoes all gratin off with a little bit of extra cheddar, Pop this bad boy in the oven, loosely wrapped, okay? Loosely covered in aluminum foil for exactly 45 minutes. At the 45 minute mark, you're gonna take that aluminum foil off and then allow it to brown for an additional 15 minutes. And my God, on today, when I tell you these potatoes are everything. Now it is key that you make sure that you allow these potatoes to rest for at least 15 to 20 minutes, if not a half hour. If you go to cut into it when it's extremely hot, it's just gonna become a runny mess. And you really want it to allow it to set just a little bit so that it can, you know, solidify and come become nice and firm. But baby, when I tell you these potatoes are off the charts, this will be the talk of the town at any of your dinner parties for the holidays or just for a casual night. Look, if you're new to my channel, welcome to Simply Food by TY. If you're one of my returning subscribers, you babies know I love y'all so much. And as always, y'all babies stay cute and take care. I mean, just look. I, uh, you know what? I got to go. Y'all take care. Bye.